Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Richter. I'm an architect on the core AI platform and tools team at Microsoft, and I've been working on AI agents and the model a context protocol and the A to A protocol. And I wanted to share with you a brief video that kind of shows the architecture of these various AI agent components together. Okay, as you can see on this slide, the big orange box is an AI agent. AI agents are typically implemented as HTTP, HTTP services, and uh, they usually are a host for MCP components, which we'll be talking about more in a moment, so the agent is an HTTP service, and it is also an MCP host. Again, I'll say more about that in a moment. The purpose of an agent is that it specializes in accomplishing a particular task. So an agent usually has a name, it has a description, and it has a set of skills that it's capable of doing uh, work on. And then because it's an AI agent, it has one or possibly more AI models that it uses usually some LLM, like a foundational LLM, like a, you know, a GPT model or something like that. Uh, then the agent has to have some things that are specific to it that it knows about that other agents wouldn't know about to make this agent unique. So a lot of times we call that the knowledge of the agent, and that can be implemented either with your own custom model or perhaps fine-tuning a foundational model or as I show on the slide here, because this is the most common and easiest thing to do, is to uh, use retrieval augmented generation or RAG to provide the knowledge where you have a bunch of, let's say, documents, PDF files, maybe for the uh, human resources content at your company, or something that's un unique that this agent really knows about. And then you uh, chunk up all of that data, get a bunch of embeddings for it, put those into an embedding database. And when a client request comes into the agent with a prompt, it can then get an embedding vector for that, do a similarity search against the embeddings vector database, find the pieces of knowledge <clears throat> that are most relevant for the prompt, and then embed those pieces of knowledge in the prompt. And we call that grounding. We're giving the agent grounding before this prompt is then sent off to the AI model to go and do its processing. An AI agent may also have other agents that it wants to speak to. You might have an AI agent that is very knowledgeable on one particular topic, uh, maybe travel information in general, but then when it comes time to book a flight or book a rental car, it may go and talk to other agents, one that's specific for booking your flight, one that's specific for uh, renting a car, and so on. So that means that you have agents talking to other agents and a, a standard protocol for that is Google's A to A or agent to agent protocol, which I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on in this particular video. Then the agent, to make it more agentic and to actually have it perform actions, we use the uh, Anthropics model context protocol. And with this protocol, you can endow agents with basically three core features. One of those features is tool calling, where the AI model can go and say to the agent uh, orchestrator that's executing and processing um, a conversation with someone that uh, instead of, uh, let's, let's say the model, uh, the prompt says, go and schedule a meeting for me on this date in my calendar. Well, to actually go and do that, an MCP tool would be invoked by the orchestrator, but the AI model tells the orchestrator to do that. Then the orchestrator goes and calls the MCP tool and says, go and book this calendar invitation. And then this piece of code that has existed for years now, that's not really AI related in any way, that piece of code would go and execute and go and create the meeting invite on the calendar. You might also maybe have in the prompt, I want to go and send an email message to Jeff and let him know that I want to have lunch today or at whatever time or something. And so an AI agent will process that prompt, then go and tell the orchestrator to go and send an email. Here's the MCP tool that needs to be called. Then the orchestrator goes and calls that MCP tool. The MCP tool goes and executes normal code that's been around for many years now to go and send an email to someone. And then the MCP tool returns back 
And then the AI agent runs its orchestrator to continue the conversation, the chat session with whoever is talking to it. So these MCPs are becoming super popular now. And because of, for many decades, we've had existing code that knows how to put meeting invites on a calendar. We have existing code that knows how to send email messages, existing code to do all kinds of things. And we want to make that existing code available to an AI agent to, so that people can speak in natural language or maybe even use their voice and have these other pieces of code that have been around for a long time you know, play part of solving the whole solution problem. So uh, for the MCP protocol, there is one piece, which is the host, which I'm showing here is the actual agent. So that's the thing where you register MCP servers with it so that when the agent boots up or is running, it can go and create within itself one MCP client for each MCP server. And MCP servers can be implemented in two different ways. They can be implemented so that they're running on the same machine as a separate process. Um, and usually the MCP client that lives within the host, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the client and a server. Uh, there's a one-to-many relationship between the MCP host and all the clients. So an MCP client could be talking to a local MCP server, which is running in another process on the machine. And then this MCP server can expose tools, resources, and prompts. I already gave an example with tools a moment ago. A different MCP client within the host could be talking to a remote MCP server. These are implemented using the HTTP protocol, just the same way as an agent is, although the API interface is a little bit different, but it's still an HTTP service. And then remotely, this could be running on another machine somewhere in a data center. And it would also expose tools, resources, and prompts as well. And then from the host, it's just talking to these clients and the clients abstracting the way away, abstracting away, whether the MCP server is running locally or running remotely. Uh, and of course, because the MCP server, the local one, is running a separate process, it can be written in any programming language. It doesn't have to be the same programming language as the AI agent. And of course, the remote one's on another machine. So that could also be written in a different programming language than the AI agent is. And then on this slide, I show only two MCP servers being used by this agent. But some agents now are using many MCP servers. Uh, could be 10, 20, or possibly even more. Um, there are some problems with having too many servers and too many tools, because when you pass this long list of possibilities to the AI agent to determine which to invoke, it can easily get confused. Also, they have some hard limits on them. So that's a problem that the industry is currently working on. Uh, on the team on at Microsoft, we have some ideas for how to address this problem. Um, actually using RAG to do a tool narrowing or tool selection is one of the things that we're experimenting with and seeing how well that that does. In addition to tools, though, let's talk about the other capabilities of an MCP server. The next one is resources. With resources, the MCP server has is basically saying to the agent, I have access to these various resources all of which can be read from. So it's a read-only or get-only kind of operation with those resources. Those resources are described by way of URIs. If they are resources to files on the local machine, then the URIs usually starts with file, colon, slash, 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 and then the path to it. But of course, it can be resources anywhere on the internet, like HTTP, or, or you can make up some protocol too for whatever it is you desire. And then uh, the orchestrator can go and query these resources and maybe show a user interface to a human being where the human being might pick some of those resources that the orchestrator could then read those resources from the server, embed those resources in the prompt, which is adding more grounding or knowledge to the prompt before the orchestrator then sends that new prompt off to the AI model and now the AI model has the content of those resources that it can reason about and do inference on for determining a answer or response to the prompt that comes in, which can then be added to the task conversation 
that's evolving over time as we keep going back and forth in the chat session between um, agents or the human and an agent. And then finally, MCP servers have props that are available. This is another way to add grounding. It's a way for an MCP server to tell an agent, I know about certain props. They have names associated with them. And the agent can present to a consumer of the agent, these are the various prompts or things that I really know how to do. I know how to create this prompt. I know what pieces of data need to be filled in to execute this prompt. And that can be presented to a human. A human might have to fill in a couple pieces of information. Like I want to look at a log file. So the human might have to put in, well, what's the path to the log file? And then it might say, and I want to look in the log file from this timestamp to this timestamp. So the human might have to put in, these are the timestamp values. And then this MCP server would return a full prompt that the or to back to the orchestrator, which would then put in the new prompt along with the query that the uh, human wants, send that off to the AI model, and then the AI model would return the response. So those are the core features. MCP servers have a couple of additional features too that are uh, much less commonly used like sampling and logging. Um, so I'm not gonna go into those. Um, but the last piece of the puzzle here is that this is a remote AI agent. I mentioned it's implemented as an HTTP, HTTP service. So other HTTP service agents on the internet, if they have the URL for this agent, then they can simply call it. So we now have the ability for one agent to talk to another agent. Uh, that's what I show now, is I show an agent here talking through the internet to the remote AI agent. And of course the agent on the left, it has all the regular AI agent stuff in it, like its own orchestrator, its own AI models, its own knowledge base of information, its own AI agent list that uses to talk to other agents and its own set of MCP uh, servers and clients to go and do the processing for that agent. If this a AI agent here has a user interface on top of it, then this is what Microsoft brands as a co-pilot. Microsoft always says a co-pilot is a UI over AI, is the kind of thing that we keep saying repeatedly. Uh, so these are branded for Microsoft as co-pilots. And then, of course, an agent that has a user interface in front of it is controlled by a human being with a keyboard and a mouse or maybe their voice to go and talk to it. And that's how the whole agentic flow works and the architecture of all of these AI agent pieces and how they fit together. I think the future of all this AI agent stuff and it, it, its ability for it to really bring value to people lies in these industry standards that all these companies are adopting, including Microsoft, of using HTTP and Google's A to A protocol and Anthropic's MCP protocol. And as long as all these companies are using these standards, all these things will interoperate together regardless of which company creates it. And then we can all improve on these protocols and standards together too to address whatever needs are required as time goes on. So this is all still very new. There's a lot more, um, things that need to be added to these protocols to make them better and work better for people. But the industry is very much rallying around all of this. Certainly Microsoft is. I'm in meetings all the time about improving these things. And um, the world is very bright going forward. Mm -hmm.